Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Fiona Niu. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist. Now I'm working in Manry as a global marketing director. So it's my honor to be here to present alarm management in and out ICU. Uh, so why we mentioned about alarm management, I think is a really important thing is we find uh, in 2014, the top 10 health technology hazard, the top one is alarm. So we should pay more attention about that. So this is why we need to work on the alarm management in and out of ICU. But first of all, we wanted to go through the survey study in ICU. So uh, this study actually to interview the nurse and the patients. So what kind of a device or what kind of uh, patient monitor do you want to have? So we, I just uh, highlight uh, some uh, information. It's about how they wanted to, if even the patient stayed in ICU, could we have some wireless cable to let patient can move more, you know, uh, comfortable? Another is uh, we should have more information from alarm management, how to let nurse and the doctors manage patient more efficiency. The second star we will see is like a random control trial. So we will see if the patient didn't stay in ICU, in the general world, it's necessary to use the vital sign monitor patient so we will say this is uh, roughly about the uh, patient and the nurse the physician's interview. So we will see, actually, even in general world, we still want to continue monitoring patient situation so that we can get the more earlier uh, warning score to let the nurse and the physician manage the patient. So the second is we still need some you know, uh, uh, general word uh, use the vital signs to light the patient's uh, situation more safe. So this is uh, for general word about the continual patient monitor. So if we want to continue monitor patient safety in and out of ICU, so what kind of device or what kind of software do we need? So we said, actually, during the alarm, management is not only a single alarm or not only a single status. It's a kind of like alarm chain. So first of all, we need to process, process uh, alarm, and uh, we can finalize the patient situation, and uh, we need some software, kind of like an alarm guard, to monitor patient's alarm and then we can distribute a different level out to different physicians. So the first thing we want to say, if we want precise alarm, how to do it? It means we need to reduce the false alarm. We use some technology to combine the different alarm to analyze what is a really important alarm to us. And then second, we need highlight this alarm to the doctors, to the nurse, so that when they get the alarm, they know how to deal with the patient, how to treat the patient. So this is a study uh, in China. We can say we combined five hospitals, more than uh, 1,000 cases. So this is a different center. We can say use the precise alarm. Actually, this technology definitely reduced the false alarm. This is really a good effort for us. And another is if we have precise alarm, but still a lot of how to analyze alarm. So this is another hospital in China, in general ICU. We can say there are uh, twi uh, 24 beds, and uh, we collect uh, one month 
alarm data. So we can say there are huge alarm. Is uh, more than 200,000. So from alarm type distribution, we can say half half from technology, half half from uh, ph physiology. So, but if we relate to device alarm, we will say most is lower medial alarm. But really important, high priority alarm only 7%. So how to use the 7% alarm to let doctor nurse to treat the patient or get uh, our high priority to check the patient? I think this is really important. How to reduce lower and medium alarm? So this is another case is uh, in hospital. So I just want I want uh, information more details. So the red bar is from patient monitor. We can see respiratory rate is really quite high. There are a lot of alarm from that. But when you see green one, it's a heart rate high from ventilator is quite lower. So what happened? So one patient from different device, we got different alarm pieces. So what happened? So actually, when we see the upper alarm, we can say from patient monitor, actually nurse set up alarm threshold at 30. They didn't change it. But from a ventilator, actually, in this hospital, they have a strong RT team. So they can manage the patient very well. They can set up individual alarm for the each patient. So this is why we can get the very different alarm from different devices. So we think if we, can, we got this information, how to set up each device, alarm, three holes, I think this is really important. We should think about that. Uh, the, another uh, study we can say, we analyzed one month for the uh, ICU patient. We can say there are different beds, actually the alarm is different. Some uh, bed is really higher, some is lower. Also, we checked uh, different time in 24 hours. Actually, we have some time, the alarm is really, low, low, is really high, but some is really lower. So how to think about that? How to analyze the alarm? So I want to uh, talk about more detail, but we should think about maybe in, I think now one nurse manages two baths, right, is generally. But should we think about use this data to improve nurse workload? Actually, we can do better. So let me summarize uh, the alarm you know, uh, management. I think so we still get different type of alarm from different uh, device, but we still have time or still have some room to organize the three holes setting up individual parameters for each patient. Also, we need efficiency uh, to reduce false alarm to each patient. Okay, so we know this is really important alarm management in ICU, but if we think about, do, I, do we need manage the patient's vital sign out of ICU or just uh, reduce patients go to ICU. So this is a study about uh, uh, patient outcome if we use the continue vital sign. So we can see if we use the continue uh, vital sign, uh, the patient transfer to ICU will reduce. Another is if we have RRT team, actually their workload, you can reduce the two. So this is we think about how to manage the patient out of ICU, probably in hospital in general world. So the, another study 
actually is from financial side. We can see if we use continual vital sign or some continual device, wearable device, from financial side, we can see the hospital can save much money. And another is actually if you buy more continual or wearable device or, or vital sign, actually it's really good investment. So this is another during COVID study uh, because we go through that is like uh, many patients, but uh, we don't many ICU beds. So this study just show if you carry on the uh, wearable or continual monitor to let patient go home, actually they don't need, most of they don't need go to ICU. Actually, this is another study to show if even the patient stayed at home, we still need some device to monitor them. So we talk about the alarm management, definitely the important is about the status alarm. Why? Because the alarm is allowed from different devices. There are a lot of parameters how to combine the alarm to let doctor nurse know what exactly happened to the patient, what exactly happened to some system, organs. So actually, if we combine different parameters, we can lay out some function to about the patient lung or cardio or some infection. So this is why we need combine alarm to let the doctor and the nurse know uh, what exactly happened. So if we talk about the alarm, definitely we don't want to send each alarm to all clinicians, to nurse, to doctor, to director, or to the you know, uh, chief guard. So we will separate different live alarm to different physicians. For nurse, for doctor, they focus on different patient situation, right? So we can do it. And uh, another, the last is about wearable device. I know now many, many uh, industry work on that. So we will lay out a different type of wear, uh, wearable device to the different uh, levels, hospital and to different uh, uh, situation. For example, if in patient in the hospital, in general world, actually we can carry on that, just a transfer patient to hospital central station. But if patient go back home, how to manage this information for doctors or nurse in hospital? So we can use the wearable device and the patient can use the, your phone. There are one apps, you can upload the data to the hospital. So that the hospital can manage the data. If something happened, they can call the patient or they can call family. So I think this is another way to protect patient safety. So this is uh, my last uh, uh, slide. I just wanted to summarize uh, alarm management in and out of, out of ICU. I think we still need to pay more attention about mute alarm, false alarm. And another is precise alarm, I think more important. This is technology definitely from the industry. Another is we have a huge alarm and data in ICU. How to analyze to improve patient safety definitely from our clinicians, our doctors, nurses. And another is if patient need to go home, we still need some wearable patient monitor to manage patient to improve patient safety. So um, thank you everyone to uh, listen to uh, my lecture. Thank you.